All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, we are on our final phylum of the invertebrates. This is phylum arthropoda. Uh, essentially means the joint foot, and it makes up 75% of all the animal species. Uh, quite familiar with most of them, I'm sure. We got the insects, spiders, cockroaches, uh, scorpions, and then there'll probably be a few that you're not quite as common or as familiar with. Okay. Let's get to it. Okay, so starting off with the phylum level characteristics. This is the characteristics that all of the organisms should have. Bilateral symmetry, which means that if you split them in half, they'll look the same on each side. Three cell layers, like a lot of the organisms have had lately. Ectoderm, endoderm, and the mesoderm. Uh, so ectoderm outer layer, endoderm inner layer, and mesoderm the middle layer. They have an external skeleton uh, made up of chitin. Uh, and which essentially makes up an exoskeleton. So this is a, a new thing for the invertebrates. Have a colon reduced to the excretory in the reproductive system. Jointed appendages, which is a big one. Segmented body, which is another big one. And well-developed senses, sight, touch, sound, chemical. Um, I would highlight these three here. Uh, exoskeleton, jointed, appendage, uh, <laughs> jointed appendages, and segmented body. Okay. Uh, and very mobile. Obviously, we know a lot of the insects can fly. Mandibles, things that are going to be used for chewing. And then they also have, uh, some of them anyways, the ability to metamorphosize. Uh, so basically go from egg to larvae to adults. We'll be looking at the, that life cycle at the end here. Okay. So you can pause that to get her down. Oops, if you need to. Okay, so the subphyla, which means we're going to be breaking them down into four categories, but really we're just going to be looking at three of them. Uh, the chlicerates, which is essentially the ticks, spiders, scorpions, and horseshoe crabs. Uh, they are named based on this special adapted mouth part, which is called the chlicerate. Uh, they have only two body parts. They have a fused, uh, essentially, head and chest, which is called the cephalothorax. And then they have their belly, which is we call the abdomen. Uh, they do not have any antennae, and they have four, four pairs of walking legs. Which you guys probably know, we know the spiders have eight legs. So if they have two pairs or four pairs, that's eight. So this is a key characteristic here when we're looking at the difference between them, which you'll have to do, is these do not have antennae. Okay, so pause that and get it jotted down. Okay, crustaceae, so the crustaceans, these ones are aquatic, make up uh, crabs, lobsters, pill bugs, barnacles. They have two pairs of antennae. Uh, they have uh, carapace, which is a shell-like structure made up of calcium carbonate. Gills may be present and are found under them uh, along the ab abdomen. And the head and the thorax are usually fused together, again, in something called that cephalothorax. So just the two body segments. Over 35,000 species, so it's a big one. So you can jot those ones down. Uh, main characteristics here, two antennae, two pairs of antennae and then only two body segments, okay? The third one, and the, the final one that we're going to look into detail is the Euneramians, which is essentially all the insects, but also millipedes and centipedes. So millipedes, thousand legs, centipedes, hundred legs, which obviously, if you look at this one here, they don't actually have a hundred legs. Uh, and all the insects, one pair of antennae, they have mandibles, and they're made up of three main classes. We're not going to get into the classes, uh, just essentially know the different, the three different examples, centipedes, millipedes, and insects. Okay. Uh, what we want to take out of this one is the one pair of antennae, and it doesn't say here, but it's made up of three segments. So jot that down, three body segment, segments, head, thorax, abdomen. So head, thorax, which is the chest, oops and the abdomen, which is the, the belly or the stomach area. Okay, so jot that down, three main segments. Pause it and get it down. And then the, the last one is, uh, they're called trilobites. Uh, this is uh, one of the oldest known organisms in terms of the invertebrates. Uh, these ones are, they don't exist any, anymore. Uh, we just see them in, fo in the fossil record, um, but that's what we're looking at here. So just essentially no trilobites are, they're old. Okay, form and function. Uh, there's a lot of differences, but these are the three main unifying characteristics. They have jointed appendages, like I pointed out at the beginning, an exoskeleton, and segmented body. So either two or three segments. Uh, the brain located in the dorsal part of the head, so the, the back part. Ventral nerve cord, so 
just to back up, brain location is at the head, so that would mean cephalization. So you might want to jot down cephalization after that. Ventral nerve cord, which means there's going to be a nerve cord going along the, uh, the underbelly. Open circulatory system powered by a single heart. So open circulatory system. Most of these won't be as efficient as a mollusk in terms of its speed and its agility. And he here it is in general. Uh, Sometimes we have the opportunity to do a grasshopper dissection. We're not going to have the opportunity this year, but we'll still be looking at the different uh, characteristics of its internal uh, system. Okay, digestive system. It has the complete tract, so it goes straight from the mouth to the anus. Uh, it has the specialized feeding parts that we've talked about, uh, but they're highly diversified. So the way that they are going to be eating is specified to what it's going to be eating. So here's a little clever cartoon that I did not make myself. Uh, every mode of feeding is seen. So anything from uh, predation, filter feeding, parasitism, scavengers, and herbivores. Uh, lots of diversity there, which would make sense if it makes up so many of our uh, different species. So you can jot that. Respiratory system, uh, some have gills, which essentially look like the feather structures increase surface area for uh, um, the most diffusion possible. Uh, some have bo book gills, which is essentially, like it says, uh, page-like sheets of respiratory tissue, like the chelicerates, the spiders, they're essentially lungs. Uh, and some either have the network of tubes that can carry the air, like the uniramians. So vastly different as well. Circulatory system, they're open. Uh, the well-developed heart pumps the blood through the arteries, which branch into smaller vessels, uh, which we mentioned last time in the mollusks that open up into uh, cavities called sinuses. So we'll be looking at the internal structure a little bit more in detail when we get into class. Excretory system. Uh, these tubes here are mostly for the terrestrial arthropods. Uh, the aquatic ones have gills, or something called a green gland. And then when we get into the nervous system, all the arthropods have a brain that consists of a pair of ganglia, so that uh, nervous tissue. It has the ventral nerve cord like we mentioned, ganglia uh, along that nerve cord, and then it has a, a lot of the different sense organs. So whether it's eyes, antennae, um, sensory organs, or sensory tissue around the mouth. And here is a few of them. Okay, so you can get that jotted down. Pause it. The muscular, uh, the musculoskeletal system, so muscles and bones, there's movement only at the joints, which is why they're there. Uh, the muscles attach to the inside of the exoskeleton, and some of the organisms are able to molt when they grow because the exoskeleton will not expand. So that's why you're going to see essentially shells, because once they grow, um, the shell's not going to grow with it. Okay, reproduction. Uh, this is the last little part that we're going to have here. Uh, separate sexes, male and female. They use internal fertilization, so they're not using the broadcasting. The sperm is going to be de deposited inside the female for development. Uh, and many of the arthropods are going to be able to do metamorphosis. And there's two different types. And you can look at the differences here where the nymph and the adult look very similar to each other. So that's going to be incomplete metamorphosis. Whereas the complete metamorphosis, like a butterfly, goes into its nymph stage, but if you look at the difference between a nymph and the adult, drastically dimpha, different, and it goes through the uh, pupa stage as well. Okay, So here's just a little extra detail. Babies look like miniature adults, whereas the complete, they're going to be uh, different in terms of their shape. So you can look at the examples. And here's just some other pictures of them, so you can see some nasty ones before we call our day. Tick. Centipede. Some larvae. Oh, gross. Hmm. Brown recluse. Black widow. Termites. Scorpion. Some crab. And bugs.